Hello, welcome to The Nightman. My name is Shane. Today, we're going to go through the latest news now. We're going to be going over what's happening with the Manchester United squad over in Spain in the warm weather training. What's likely to happen on the second half of the season. What your opinions are. All the reactions, news and a lot more. The mic, make your short productive time. Yeah. been a while since the latest news update has come through so I just wanted to address a few things one of those being the latest signing albeit via loan Odia Nagalo now whether or not you believe he's the solution long term ultimately Igalo has been signed because of Rashford's injury and Martial's inability really to step up to the plate and ultimately take the reins of being Manchester United's number nine striker. Now, he's had numerous opportunities this season. He's predominantly played in the number nine position. Unfortunately, a string of inconsistent performances has pretty much forced Oli's hand. Obviously, we've got Mason Greenwood alongside uh, Martial. However, without Martial leading the line, you can't really put pressure on Greenwood to be your main source of goals right now having just turned 18 in October so that being said it looks like at the moment that's why we've had to sign Igalo due to as I say Rashford's injury and Martial not taking his opportunity. Now it's been well documented that Odin Igalo is a long time life Manchester United supporter. He ultimately it's his dream move for him. He obviously was playing over in China. He's 30 years of age. He is a different type of striker. Now, I've heard a lot of people saying that in terms of Ogalo, he's not the type of player that Manchester United should be signing. He's not the saviour. Ultimately, we're not asking for a saviour right now. We're asking for a replacement, for an, an alternative to Martial, an alternative to Rashford, and an alternative to Greenwood. By signing someone with experience, also, Premier League experience, you hear the, hear the, uh, ex, well, the ex-players, pundits and whatnot saying, Igalo, how's, why is Man United signing, signing him? Ultimately, you've got to look at where we are. We're not in top four form. We're not even in top six form. So ultimately, we've got to, we've got to play to where, we've got to act to where we are in the league at the moment. And that's, yeah, it's trying to, we're, we're aspiring to get into the top four position, but at the moment, it's looking very, very unlikely. One of the things I do like about the Igalo move is, as I've mentioned before, he's a different type of striker. Albeit, it's somewhat of a Watford reject. But, as I say, he is a lifelong Manchester United fan. It's his dream move. And ultimately, when told that he will have to take a pay cut to come to Manchester United, he said he doesn't care just make the move happen. Now, with players like that at your disposal, at least you know you're going to get full and absolute commitment. So, with Agallo being a Man United fan, with him wanting to just be there, it's 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 a lot. It means a lot. It, it, it counts for that extra 5%. It counts for that extra bit, that extra grit and determination, which, in all honesty, we're not showing at the moment, are we? Staying with the new signings, McTominay's come out and given his opinion, basically, on the, on Manchester United's new signings. He said that they're very, very, very good guys. Ultimately, you need that in the squad. You need players that, for example, you go out to deal, dinner with and chill with and just be liked and, and become and integrate yourself within the squad. So, in terms of getting themselves settled in the squad, sounds like it's all good, as McTominay is saying. It helps on the pitch as well, if your mate's off the pitch, obviously. If you're not, not that... Well, Loads of times you've seen instances where players aren't mates off the pitch. However, you can still gain success without being mates on the pitch. But it certainly helps if you're getting along. As I mentioned in the intro, yes, the Manchester United squad are over in Spain doing their warm weather training. Now, there's been a few players that's been confirmed by Oli that aren't involved in the warm weather training. Those players being Lee Grant, who's picked up an injury and is going to require surgery. Odi Nagala, obviously, because he's just come over from China. And ultimately, Oli doesn't want to risk him going out of the country and possibly not getting back in. Marcus Rashford, obviously, he's on long-term injury again. And also Paul Pogba. These guys are 
doing their own bits in terms of getting themselves back to full fitness, obviously. But we've got a full squad other than these guys over there, including Eric Bailly, Axel Tunzebi, and Scott McTominay. Those guys are ahead of schedule in terms of returning from their injury, which is looking good. So hopefully by the time the players get back from warm weather tra training, we've got a little bit more in terms of options at our disposal, ready to go into the second half of the season. Um, hopefully all guns blazing. For those that did want some major, major moves in the January transfer market, it was never really likely to happen in all honesty. The fact that we are, if you like, as Oli has said in previous interviews as well, we're on the rebuild track now. Oli has often stated that we won't just go in for a particular player just because they're available. He's consistently said they have to be the right player. Now, along with that, Oli's gone along and obviously highlighted comments that he said in the past, in pre-season, saying that we are in the midst of a rebuild and that there are no quick fixes. Now, in terms of no quick fixes, that obviously means signings that we've made in the past, a la Di Maria, a la Falcao, a la Memphis Depay, those type of signings. Alexis Sanchez, for example. Now, all those players coming in previous and obviously leaving, I feel as though Oli has come in and really, really, really trying to stamp his mark on the squad in terms of getting rid of a whole load of Deadwood, getting rid of a whole load of players that aren't for the badge. Now, Oli loves players that ultimately want to play for the badge and want to obviously leave all their blood and guts on the pitch for Manchester United. Now, those players, as I mentioned, with Odin Agalo, who is a lifelong Manchester United supporter, those are the guys that can get you those wins, can get you those draws when you're in losing positions. Now, I think Oli's ultimately coming and he's done okay in terms of trying to mould the squad into what he wants it to be. But we are still some way off. I know Oli's only had two transfer windows, uh, one full transfer window, that being the, the summer. But I would still like to see some urgency in terms of the way we play, because at the moment, it's still looking very, very lethargic. It's still looking very, very one-dimensional, one-dimensional, and we don't, at the moment, have a plan B. Let me know what you feel in regards to how our transfer window went, by the way. Let me know if you feel like it's been successful. And in terms of Oli's current status as Man United head coach, do you want to see him stay? Do you want to see him leave? Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and I shall see you in the next one. Take care.